This heavy haulage model by WSI is in the colours of Torben Raffen, the Danish heavy transport specialist. It comes in a standard WSI branded box, there's no information about the real truck and there's no assembly instructions for the model either. Inside the box the model is factory sealed in a polystyrene tray and when you lift the lid you can get the parts out. These include a hub and a nose cone for a wind turbine structure. There is the Notterbaum trailer. And there are a couple of bags of parts. One contains a set of pallets for use with the load. And the other has a variety of parts for use with the trailer. And finally there's the DAF 6x2 tractor. For the initial assembly we'll just put the vehicle together with its load. The kingpin just clips into place on the fifth wheel of the tractor and that forms a good connection and it's also scaled pretty well because you've got a full range of movement. With the tractor and trailer joined together we can add the optional headboard to the gooseneck. The headboard and sides just consist of a number of metal parts and they clip firmly into place. This arrangement is optional because you don't have to fit these parts. There are some deck posts included which can be added instead and we'll see the deck posts later. The headboard and side parts are all metal but there's also another piece you can fit which is an optional toolbox which is plastic and on the review model that proved a little bit trickier to clip into place. Next we can put the load on board and we'll have a closer look at the parts later. There's no guidance provided as to how the load should be placed so we'll just spread out the pallets and then put the hub on. That's the heavier part so that goes on the middle of the trailer and then the nose cone can go in its own place at the back of the trailer. One good inclusion is that there are elasticated holding down straps which can be used to secure the load. These straps have little hooks on the end and they just clip into place on the trailer edges and they actually do a good job to stop the load being easily knocked off the model. If you're the kind of person that likes strapping things down tight then this part of the model is fun. The wind turbine hub is a wide element so it's good to put the width markers out and these just pull out at the front and there are a couple of pieces which can just press in on either side at the rear. However, the plastic width markers which fit at the back were an extremely tight fit on the review model so they had to be trimmed off a little to be able to be put into place easily. Underneath the DAF tractor, WSI have done a really good job with the transmission and suspension which are really detailed. The wheels have got very good tyres and they're decorated really well in the red and cream colour scheme. The lights and the mirrors are a strong feature of the detailing on the cab and it's good to see a realistic number plate. Attention has also been given to the modelling of the interior of the cabin and the DAF name appears both on the seat backs and on the steering wheel. The tractor also looks great because of the standard of the graphics which are very detailed. Looking behind the cab there's a ladder, coiled airlines and diamond plated non-slip surfacing. At the rear the lights, number plates and graphics all look sharp. The modelling of the Nutterbohm trailer is really good with excellent structure and the rear axles have realistic suspension and plenty of hoses. The wheels also look good in the Torben Raffen colour scheme. The high standard of graphics continues on the gooseneck with some fine detail. The plastic replica timber deck looks realistic with the bolt locations indicated. And the deck edges have painted tie down loops and more tiny graphics. And the high standard of detailing continues right through to the back with the Denmark country sign. Looking now at the load elements, the replica timber pallets are made of plastic but they're very well detailed. The Vestas turbine hub appears to be a mixture of resin and plastic parts and it's pretty good. The bolt locations are all visible and detailed and the nose cone is too. It does fit on top of the hub but it's not a tight fit. <laughs> Testing out the DAF tractor first and as expected it travels well enough in a straight line. There's no working suspension and the rear wheels are joined to a common axle. And as is often the case with WSI models, the steering is modelled for accuracy rather than functionality, so there's really very limited movement on the steering. You can set the wheels a bit, but um, it produces a very shallow turn. On the other hand, the implementation of the tilting cab has been done very well. It tilts well forward and there's a very detailed Packard engine visible when you tilt the cab forward. Those are the features of the tractor and moving on to the trailer it has very good functionality. The suspension on the rear axles is excellent. And if we pick it up we can see that each of the axles is controlled by a pair of springs that works really very well. That's the front two axles. The rear axle also has the suspension and on the real trailer it has a self steering function. 
And on the trailer that's been modelled very well because you get a good range of movement and the trailer can steer through a realistic arc. There are a couple of other features underneath the trailer. At the rear there are a couple of stabilising feet which can be lowered and they're used if the trailer is end loaded. At the front of the trailer there are a couple of landing legs which can be unscrewed and lowered. And these are very good because they don't show any unsightly screw threads and they've got nice floating metal feet. Once lowered they provide a stable platform for the trailer if it's not connected to a tractor. Another very good feature of this trailer is that it's extendable so it pulls out to almost double its length. And there's also a, a crossbar which can be moved anywhere along the spine beam. And the whole thing is a nice mechanism that works well. Another feature is that the deck width can be extended by pulling out these little consoles, although annoyingly one was missing on the review model. The width is then extended by adding these small planks which are all different lengths and have to be put in place in a certain sequence. The system does work quite well but you do have to be a little bit careful because the planks only lightly rest and so they're easily knocked off. Another display option is to use deck posts and these just fit into holes which run along the edges of the deck and they can also be used on the gooseneck if you want. The posts are metal and they look quite good but the only small issue is that they're not necessarily a tight fit in some of the holes so you have to straighten them up a little. This is another highly detailed model from WSI which looks particularly good in the Torben Raffan livery. The windmill load adds to the look of the model and the working features are very good too. As an example of a heavy haulage vehicle, it is outstanding.